Well, this morning we did have some overnight export sale business to talk about, the flash sales, the USDA calls them. And I uh, just wanted to remind you that we had a sale of soybeans to China. It was 132,000 tons. And we had a sale of corn to Italy, 105,000 tons. And another sale of corn to unknown destinations. That was 120,000 tons. So three batches as we came into a new trading week here. Let's look at our quotes provided by bar chart here and see what the trends are. So far, we're still lower on most of the corn, but not the nearby September. This is interesting. You have it one and three quarters higher at 612. Hmm, is that related to the overnight sales? We'll talk about that in a minute. In uh, December, we're down three and a half at 606 and a half. So that's quite a spread change right there. That's about five cents worth just between September and December here so far this morning. Moving on to our soybean trade in the early going, we have the September contract three and three quarters higher at 1467. But just like in the corn, you have the new crop month, in this case November, trading to lower. We're at 1406 and three quarters. Now let's check out that wheat trade, and that's the one that had all kinds of volatility over the evening trade. In Chicago, September is now eight cents higher at 783 and three quarters. If you were with me earlier, after we opened up the morning session here, if you recall, it was down about two or three cents at that time, and it had about a 10 cent rally right after we gave the quotes last time. So a bit of a turnaround yet again in the wheat. In Kansas City, September five and a quarter higher now at 853 and a half per bushel. And in the Minneapolis spring wheat market, you have September nine higher at 895 and a half. Here to talk about it, we have in studio Mr. Chris Swift of Swift Trading in Nashville. Interesting, already we have some weird market dynamics at work and we're only not even an hour into the trade. <laughs> so we have the wheat market bouncing around all over. It did it overnight, it flipped to the downside and then we opened up and then it flipped back to the upside. What the heck, what's going on? You know, in wheat I'm not real sure because a lot of it has to do with the European issues and, and here in the U.S., how much rain do we get into the really drought portion of the wheat belt right now so we can look forward to see what our September, October wheat seedings are. But if you look at the way the board's kind of uh, going right now, it's all old crop, new crop. Shows how much uh, uh, lower our old crop stocks are that we're getting to the very ends of what our um, uh, supplies are. We're trying to find out where, what we you know have to pay for those uh, end supplies, and then knowing we've got new supplies coming up in less than probably 60 to 70 days. When you look at corn and, and soybeans and the comparison of September to the new crop months mm -hmm. here, um, is that telling you that if you have anything left on the farm, you should be sweeping out oh, the bins right now. Absolutely, and I think everybody is. I don't think it's a case of want to or it's need to. Uh, we're having to get everything cleaned out for the next crop coming in, but I think end users, everything in, in commodity production is cyclical, and I think what we did is we saw a little bit of a decline in all of our prices, and everybody appreciated by that. Now we get into new cyclical um, production going into this, uh, this fall, and we need more product. All right, so if you're thinking about doing some hedging for the new crop coming up, is the decision on that going to hinge on what comes out Friday from USDA? Um, probably think? not. No, no, I think a lot of the new crops have already been hedged when we were $2 higher than this back in the summer months. Um, I think what we're going to see is maybe some recognition by USDA that the crop isn't 177 bushels per acre and probably going to be a little bit greater than 10% unharvested acres. And I think any kind of... Um, change in that from what USDA kind of lets us know that they're acknowledging what the private forecasters are already seeing. You think a lot of folks are just staying on the sidelines? Ahead I, I think of it's going to be a very volatile week this week, but I don't know that we'll see much price direction until we get to Friday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bouncy markets, yes. more of the same. All right. We'll pause right here. We'll come back and we'll talk livestock next. Well, we're back with Chris Swift. What do you say we take a look at what's going on in our livestock trade? And let's go to live cattle futures right now, provided by Bar Chart, and we are higher across the board. We have October live cattle now trading 65 cents higher. We're at 144.52 in December, gaining 62 cents. Those two months are leading the pack on the upward momentum. Well, look at this here, Chris, in the feeder cattle trade. You have September up a dollar ninety-seven now at one eighty-five forty, and you have October up a dollar fifty-five at one eighty-seven fifty. 
Well, now, the corn isn't doing much. Why the big strength in the feeder cattle market, do you think? I think the feeder cattle index was up pretty good on Friday, up another dollar and set new highs in this rally. And so the futures have kept the premium on to the feeder cattle, and we know that the drought has impacted tremendous amounts of the herd size there. And I think coming into the fall of the year, we may be seeing just a little bit lower for our um, uh, supplies coming in the, the yearling October, November fall run, and they're just probably a little bit lesser supplies going in. We have heard all the stories about all the uh, cattle coming mm -hmm. to the sale barns out right. there in the plains. Is that letting up now? I mean, are, are they getting to the end of that? I, I don't think so. I think no. what we're doing is just calling right now. Um, I don't think we're got into mass liquidation yet. We're just kind of calling and going month by month to see if the rains come in. But I, I know that it has been heavy. I know the cow slaughter has been heavy. And it'll probably continue at this pace for just a little while, but I'm not sure that it's going to uh, extend any further than probably the fall of the year once we get into some kind of moisture. Can't keep that up forever. No, you can't. We're going down pretty quick, too. And I think it's yeah. one of the reasons why you see feeder cattle up just a little bit there is simply because we are killing our breeding stock. Well, and, and I know we were talking with Daryl Peel last week mm -hmm. from Oklahoma State, and, and he was saying the ramifications of these lower numbers and the the sell-off of the national herd, mm -hmm. uh, that could have an impact for three or four years. Oh, absolutely. Same as what he did in 13 and 14. Oh, we, mm -hmm. we dealt with that all the way up until just last year. You know, if we think about going back, we have been higher and higher up until probably 2019 in numbers. It wasn't until 2020 when we started to cut back and then we had other issues that came about in our uh, society. So that kind of backed things up even further again. And from what I hear, there's such a shortage of, of uh, hay mm -hmm. and pasture land and everything. I mean, it's not like we can start rebuilding the herd anytime oh, no, soon it's, either. It's, you it's, know? The, it's the spring of the year at the very first right now. Yeah, okay. Well, let's take a look at our uh, lean hog trade then. See what's going on there on the futures board, and we're higher here too, Chris. Look at October up a dollar forty-two, ninety-nine eighty-two. We're getting close to that triple-digit mark again on that October contract. That's leading the pack. Why do you think that is? Uh, the lean hog index. So the lean hog index is right around where August is, a little above one twenty-one, and so that's a pretty wide gap to have to fill in a short period of time. But that spread between August and October. Who's going to give more, do you think? Oh, well, August is going off the board this week. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just a case of they are in line with the index, so they'll settle right into the index. Then October comes on the board, and I don't know. I, it's kind of a tough. They say there's fewer hogs out there, and I, I don't discount that at all, but uh, maybe a meeting in the middle would be a little bit more something to look forward to. Kind of got its work cut out for it. <laughs> it does. It, $30 is a good spread to have that to work a, with. Yeah, that's a yeah. big hill to climb right there. All right, well, thanks for pointing that out. Appreciate it. Uh, Chris Swift of Swift Trading right here in Nashville with us and always a treat to have him in the studio. Janet, I'll turn it back to you.